So I'm gonna talk about the pathologist perspective of fusion biopsy versus transparent. We've heard a little bit about the, uh, the clinical aspects of this, and my talk is gonna be focused on correlation with pathological results. Um, <clears throat> there's my disclosures. I do, I am a shareholder of 3D biopsy that uh, creates tools for focal therapy, but we're not gonna be discussing any of those with this talk. So why have this talk? Well, I think we all recognize and known for years the overwhelming data that our 12 core systematic biopsies are inaccurate. They're only about 50 to 65% accurate for picking up cancers at all, and if they do pick up cancers, as you see from this large database from the SEER database, a, a large portion of cancers that were thought to be low volume, three plus three cancers, um, on biopsy um, are, are upgraded and even have advanced stage. So when you're trying to consider focal therapy or active surveillance for an individual person, the transrectal biopsy approach leaves you with some concerns. We know that it often misses and undergrades significant cancers. So how can we more accurately assess tumor grade aggressiveness and tumor extent, multifocality volume location if we're gonna be doing focal therapy. Well, one potential solution is we can increase our sampling, and in this case, increase precise sampling, not just more cores, but where those cores are located, and that's the so-called transperineal template-guided uh, mapping approach. <coughs> Whoops, how do I go back? How do I go backwards? There we go. <coughs> So it's basically a, a game of battleship, right? What you're basically doing is saying with, 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 uh, with a systemic biopsy, all we're doing is shooting needles randomly into a prostate and hoping we hit a target. Whereas with a transperineal mapping biopsy, we're essentially saturating the field. Now, whether or not you use a template guided like this and do a biopsy, you know, every half centimeter or centimeter across down and in, to pick those up, or you divide the prostate into zones. Here you can divide it into uh, quadrants, uh, octants, or up to 20 zones, and then do four to six to eight biopsies per zone. Both are acceptable means of doing a template-guided approach. This has been looked at uh, prospectively on the PROMISE trial, which has already been mentioned a couple of times uh, today. The PROMISE trial showed that looking for a clinically significant cancer defined as Gleason 4 plus 3 or uh, extensive tumor on a needle biopsy, that template-guided biopsy outperformed systemic biopsy, systematic biopsies in every area of Likert score. How does it compare with prostatectomy, if that's the gold standard? Well, here's a study out of uh, Australia, looked at 431 prostatectomy specimens. They used the Bartles technique, dividing the prostate into zones and saturating each zone with cores. And they showed that it was much more likely that you would have a tumor upgraded from biopsy to prostatectomy uh, if you were, had a standard truss biopsy versus those that had a template-guided biopsy. This is our data from our database here. Now these are patients who had both a transrectal 12 core and a transperineal template guided biopsy. And then subsequently we went on to uh, prostatectomy. We had 32 of these. And this shows the, the Gleason score correlations here. Here you have the Gleason score of the radical prostatectomy on the left and either truss or uh, mapping biopsy across the top. So here would be the line of concordance on the two biopsies. So if you're down here in yellow, you are upgraded at the time of prostatectomy versus uh, biopsy. And if you were in the green, you were downgraded. Here's the results down here. Trust biopsy showed a concordance of only about a third. This was more than doubled if you used uh, template-guided mapping biopsies. Most of these were upgraded at the time of uh, prostatectomy, much lower uh, upgrading at the time uh, of uh, <clears throat> surgery with template-guided mapping biopsies with the risk of having some downgraded. And if you look where the downgrades are, it's really in the proportion of patterns three and four that you see those, those kind of discrepancies. The other thing we could do is we could do targeted fusion biopsies. Again, this was also done in a prospective uh, way in the precision trial looking at two groups, the MRI targeted biopsy group versus the standard biopsy group. And in every uh, 
way that you look at um, the performance of template, or, or excuse me, of fusion guided biopsies, it outperforms systemic, uh, bi systematic biopsies. And you showed higher Gleason grades overall with the uh, MRI targeted group and a higher rate of picking up clinically significant cancer. How does this compare with the prostatectomy if we consider that to be the gold standard? This is a study out of Europe that showed if you look at 12 core systematic biopsies and targeted biopsies, that the targeted biopsies show higher concordance with the uh, prostatectomy results, less upgrading uh, at, for cancers overall, or if you define it as clinically significant grade group two or above cancers. Also noted was the combination of using a systematic biopsy plus a targeted biopsy perform better than either one alone. More concordance, less upgrading at the time of prostatectomy. And this is similar results uh, shown by an excellent study out of the NCI. A, a high volume, over 2,000 patients uh, had both uh, targeted biopsy and 12-core systematic biopsy, and again showed that the targeted lesions, you're more often going to pick up higher grade cancers and that the combination of doing the two was better, picking up cancers overall, and most of these being significant cancers. And again, when they looked at the gold standard comparing to prostatectomy, of which there were 400 or uh, so of these, they showed here, you look at this graph down here, that systematic biopsies had a high rate of upgrading at the time of prostatectomy. This is any upgrade, about 40%. This is upgrading to grade group two or higher, 30%, and 16, almost 17% upgrading to grade group three or above with systematic biopsies targeted. These rates were much lower, significantly lower, and again, the combination of them showed the best correlation with prostatectomy. Now, how about a head-to-head -head comparison between MRI-targeted fusion biopsies and TTMB? And there are very few studies that have really looked at this, but I want to highlight, you know, probably because of design considerations, but I want to highlight a few. If we go back to some of the earlier study, this is a study out of the UK. Now, this is just looking at MRI, MRN, MRI by itself, excuse me, using a 1.5T system. And at, at 426 patients, they either had negative, meaning no cancer on a systemic bi biopsy or low risk cancer, followed by MRI, and they used template guided mapping biopsy as the reference standard. And in the comparison, they found that the area under the curve for MRI was about 0.75 for what they call Gleason uh, grade 4 plus 3 significant tumor with a sensitivity of 87%, specificity about 55. This is another study out of, the, out of uh, Europe using the bar, Barzell's technique, again, dividing the prostate into zones and doing multiple biopsies per zone. And they identified tumor in 36% of men who had a negative MRI, meaning there was no target really to a biopsy in the first place. Most of these were significant, either by grade, 30% of them had uh, Gleason score seven or above, or max uh, tumor length of four millimeters or higher. Interestingly, two thirds of those were in the anterior section, and we've heard anterior areas could be harder by MRI. In our study, we looked at, and this is a study that uh, Dr. Stone referred to uh, earlier today, looked at 80 patients that underwent uh, multiparametric MRI using a 3T and followed by a mapping biopsy. And again, showing that the MRI had an area under the curve of about less than 0.6. For clinically significant cancer, we defined as three plus four or higher rather than the, the PAL study. Again, with a sensitivity of about 81, specificity low at 35. Now, true head-to-head -head comparisons are shown, shown here. This is a, a study, out, again, out of Australia that looked at uh, <clears throat> patients who underwent both a fusion-guided biopsy and a, uh, or a systematic biopsy, again, using the Bartles technique. And they found that fusion uh, MRI only uh, uh, biopsies only picked up about 50% had cancer. And that's what, what we've seen in our institution as well. You think you have a lesion, you biopsy it, and only about 50% of the time do we actually have a cancer. The majority of them were clinically significant, here defined as three plus four or higher. 
And in their hands, although you saw increased numbers of cancers diagnosed by mapping biopsies, these were not significant over uh, focal therapy or focal biopsy itself. And most of the ones that were picked up were uh, considered insignificant. But again, the combination of using a targeted biopsy with a mapping biopsy performed better, picked up more cancers overall and significantly more clinically significant cancers than, uh, than using a, a, a targeted biopsy by itself. This is another study out of uh, Europe, uh, high volume number of patients, 415. They were all uh, underwent uh, multiparametric MRI with 3T, followed by focal therapy unless there was no lesion to target. And then they also underwent a template-guided biopsy. Their, their definition of significant cancer was three, four, or higher. And I want to focus right here. There were 124 patients with a negative MRI, so they didn't have a target. They weren't biopsied by focal uh, <coughs> biopsy. And of those, almost 26% of them were found to have clinically significant uh, tumor detected on mapping biopsy. And here's their data below here, kind of showing different uh, definitions of clinically significant, whether you call it three plus four or higher, or four plus three or higher, or add in volume of tumor as well. No matter how you define it, uh, mapping biopsy, which was this gray bar here, outperformed focal fusion biopsy. <clears throat> in every category here. And although you did pick up higher uh, cancers with the combination of the two, this wasn't significant over just using uh, the template-guided mapping biopsy itself. And looking head-to-head -head with cancer grade, here we've got the fusion biopsy results on the left and the mapping biopsy results over the top. Again, this would be the line of concordance in purple here. If you're in the green, you're saying that your focal biopsy, your targeted biopsy, uh, gave a higher Gleason grade than the template-guided biopsy, and it would be just the opposite if you're up here in the orange, where the mapping biopsy gave you an upgrading. So uh, to avoid doing math, I've done it for you down here. 12.5% of cases with, had prostate cancers that were upgraded on fusion targeted biopsy versus the mapping biopsy, whereas almost 50% of cases were upgraded on the mapping biopsy when compared to the fusion targeted biopsy. So in conclusion, traditional transrectal biopsy schemes are terribly inaccurate for identifying significant cancer, and we've known that for years. Transperineal mapping biopsies and MRI-guided targeted biopsies offer improved pathological accuracy over these trust-guided biopsies. Transperineal mapping biopsies do offer improved pathological accuracy over MRI fusion biopsies, as shown by the data I've done today. But the combination of the two seems to be the most useful in determining eligibility for focal therapy. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much.